Hello everyone, my name is Lisa and welcome to my channel. Here I talk about how to successfully use co-creation processes such as hackathons, brainstormings and collaborative competitions to solve scientific, technological and business challenges. And today I really want to talk about rules of an efficient, organized co-creation process that will help to get the most out of your time and your efforts. I've gathered 10 rules that I saw myself in different collaboration projects. Some of them are more important, some of them are less important to follow, but I think that utilizing all of them, at least at some point, you will get what you want from your process and everyone will be happy. So let's start with the rule number one, different background matters. Probably it's not the most essential one, but it is quite important in my opinion. It doesn't matter which co-creation process you organize and which problem you are solving, whether it's a business problem or it's a scientific problem. I think that it's great to invite people of different background and I mean different professional background into your co-creation process. So for example, if we are talking about the business challenge, it's good if you have some participants from your engineering team, QA team, product management, project management, support specialists, everyone from the company that you have, not only marketers, not only sales managers, because all these people will be looking at the problem from different perspective. So they will be able to bring really comprehensive solutions. And if we're talking about the scientific challenges, here I know that a lot of R&D managers invite teams and researchers from exactly the same area as their challenge. But I had a different experience and I saw a number of projects when we invited researchers, university teams that were not directly connected to the challenge, but they brought amazing results. So for example, we had a scientific challenge dedicated to food and we invited the team from a completely different field. They were doing projects for concrete on the moon but on a basic level, uh, on the level of processes and materials, these guys, they understood what was going on. So they were able to bring uh, the most creative, the most innovative solution. And they were among those who won the challenge. Rule number two, and this rule is the essence of the co-creation process. It is about creating safe space for sharing ideas. During any co-creation process, it is important to let participants share their thoughts, their ideas, their feedback, ask questions and communicate openly. And here, I think that one of the challenges is that many people, they are afraid to openly share what they think. And here, if you're a facilitator of the process, you need to think about ways how to do it. We can talk about some one-on-one -on -one meetings, for example, or about maybe some forums anonymous forums that gather feedback, gather questions and gather comments. This is something that you can use. And also, if you facilitate the process, you need to make sure that on the client side, and when I talk about the client, I mean either your own team, your management team, or if you're really working with the client just with their management team, you need to make sure that they understand it, that they are not that harsh towards participants, that they express their own opinion in a correct 
and polite way. And I'm not saying that you are not allowed to criticize someone, but you need to do it in a way not to scare this person. And during brainstorming sessions, sometimes it's really good to just let it go and allow participants to share the craziest ideas. And just say, we're not criticizing these ideas, we're not criticizing anything, we are gathering them. It doesn't matter how wild they are, just bring them all in. Rule number three is all about the structure. Your co-creation process should have the structure if you are solving a really difficult challenge. It should have the start, the end, and often the middle. This is something that personally I like to add because I see how important it is to check how everyone is doing in the middle of the whole way, of the whole journey. It, of course, adds some frames, but it also allows to focus on what you do. And of course, I'm not saying that your conversation with a colleague over lunch is not a co-creation process. It might be, but if we're talking about really big challenges that your company might have, you need to have the structure. And from the previous rule, we have rule number four, which is timing. You need to set time frames for your process, time frames for each step of the process. For example, if we're talking about the first step from the beginning to the middle point, from the middle point to the end, maybe you have testing in your process, which is also allowed, but you need to have some time frames. And why is it important? Because again, it gives an additional motivation, it gives additional focus. When I was working for the innovation consulting company, we always had these time frames for each part of our long and usually one year long process. And of course, it was difficult to keep up with timing because it's quite challenging to work with different parties with universities, with companies, a lot of legal issues on the way, but still each part was of a certain time frame. So for example, like three months and then, I don't know, two weeks, then three months again, something like that. And it helped us to be more efficient with the timing. And also, again, because you kind of squeeze this co-creation into a limited time frame, you get more focus and often you get more bright ideas. It shouldn't be too crazy, of course, and you should keep in mind the difficulty of the problem you're trying to solve. But in general, putting these tight time frames, it helps. Also, because you want your participants to work extra hard, you cannot expect them to do it for a long time. You cannot say, oh yeah, guys, like you have five years and you should work so hard to find the solution. It's just impossible. You will burn out really quickly. And that's another reason why you need these timeframes. Rule number five, and it is connected to motivation for the teams. You know, it's of course a good feeling to win something, to win the hackathon, for example. But when you invest a lot of your time and a lot of your efforts and a lot of your brain power, you want to get something in return, something that is going to be beneficial for you. So this is why if you organize a co-creation process, you need to think about some incentives. And in most cases, it is, of course, about money. So given a financial award is probably the best thing that you can do for the participants of your hackathon or collaborative competition or whatever. It doesn't matter. And I'm talking about having internal hackathon when you do it only within your own team. And it, also, it is also connected to an external hackathon or hybrid. 
it doesn't matter where participants are coming from. You still need to give something special for them, at least for the winners. Sometimes if you work for a large company, you might have some other incentives. For example, if you have a lot of candidates to work in your company, you might want to offer positions. I think this could also be a good motivation, but in general, the financial award will probably be the best and should be the main solution. And also with these extra awards, you can stimulate certain qualities in participants. For example, you can give awards for the most innovative, creative solution, or you can additionally stimulate co-creation itself. And I think for scientific challenges, it is probably the most difficult topic because researchers rarely want to share knowledge with others. Keeping in mind there are questions of intellectual property involved, but this is something that we did in our challenges when I was working again for the innovation consulting company. We had this special co-creation award and it was quite big to make participants share their knowledge, their insights, and help each other to find solutions. Rule number six, and it is connected to the challenge definition itself. The challenge for the co-creation process should be focused and ambitious. When I talk about having a focused challenge, I'm saying that you don't want to look for something general. The more specific the challenge is, the more specific the solutions are. So if you're working on a business challenge, think not about looking for ways to increase your revenue, but about your new specific product and a new specific market a new business model that will help you to increase your revenue by 2025 or something like that. And if we are talking about the scientific challenge, you don't want to find a new material. You want to find a new material for this specific application, for this specific niche. If you have numbers, feel free to add numbers. But remember that the focus should be there. And also, as I said, the challenge should be ambitious because everything about co-creation processes is extra. Extra time, extra participants, extra efforts, extra everything, extra ideas. And to find ambitious solutions the challenge itself should be ambitious. An ambitious goal sparks creativity. Rule number seven is connected to rule number six. And here I'm talking about having a clear set of criteria. You need to have a list of criteria based on which you will assess the ideas, the solutions of participants of your co-creation project. And they should know what you're looking for. In terms of the number of such criteria, you know, here less is more. Because again, you need to remember that you need to be focused. You don't want to, you know, spread your attention over various things. And remember that at the end of the day, you will not get a final solution anyway. You just want some sort of an MVP or a sort of a strategy or something like that, but it will not be a final solution anyway. So it's better to focus on something that is really important for you to find. And here also, if we're talking about criteria, they should be focused just as the challenge definition and they should be specific. And here just 
go wild with, with numbers just add lots of numbers here don't be afraid but be specific and be ambitious again don't be afraid to set higher standards rule number eight is about involvement of management this is probably not the most important rule but i think it's definitely good to have and what I mean by that is it's good to involve in your co-creation process your management. Whether it's an internal project and you will invite the decision makers of your own company or if you are a facilitator for the project, it's good to invite the management staff of your client. But it's good to have them on board for the whole process and involve them in all the different meetings, gatherings you will have on the way for the introduction meeting, for the brainstorming sessions that you will have and the finale, of course. Why is it good to have management involved? First of all, you will give additional motivation to your participants. They will see that this is something that is important to solve. This is not just a random challenge, this is not just a random problem, but the company is really interested in they investing their time in it. And the second reason for management involvement is that it's easier to steer the solutions in the right direction because the decision makers, they know what they are looking for and they will be able to involved to get involved early in the process to let your teams or participants know whether they're doing their solutions in the right way or in the wrong way so they will be able to just give some feedback to participants and for example if one of the teams is coming up with something that is not really what the company is looking for the management staff will just be able to say straight away, hey guys, you should not focus on this. Please pay attention to this and that. And by that, you'll be able to save lots of time and lots of nerves because teams will know what they need to do and your management and the management of the client will be happy to know that they are not wasting their time and their money. When we were doing our innovation co-creation projects, we always involved someone from the client side in all the meetings we had. There were, there were always a project leader who participated in every session and there were also other participants from the client side. So we were able to get all the information we needed at any time and also our university teams were able to get this first-hand feedback. Rule number nine. If you work with teams in your co-creation process, you need to make sure they have team leaders. Personally, I'm a huge fan of working with groups of people for the co-creation projects because in this way, we get double co-creation. First of all, within the team and secondly, between the teams. But every time I work with a group of people, I know that they need to have, they need to assign a person to be their leader. First of all, this person will be responsible for delivering the solution. And secondly, he or she will help to utilize people's talents and skills in the best possible way. If you don't have team leaders for your teams, there is a high chance that you will not get any solution at all. And the last but definitely not least, rule number 10, let people have fun. Even though we are talking about an organized, well-structured co-creation process with the beginning, the middle point and the end, with meetings, with official gatherings, you still want to allow your participants to have fun. Because I really believe 
that co-creation is all about fun. It's about involving so many talented, outstanding people. It's about these amazing, innovative ideas going around. It's about communication. And I do think that having those extra activities, parties, outdoor activities, if you are doing an offline co-creation process. This is something that will help your project a lot because your participants will have these free conversations, they will share their feedback, they will share their insights. And maybe in these dialogues, this informal communication, they will find this amazing absolutely novel, creative, and the brightest ideas for your challenge. So even though we have hackathons and brainstormings and collaborative competitions for solving some serious and the most difficult challenges, we still want the journey to be fun. This is it. Those are my 10 rules of an organized co-creation process. I don't know, maybe along my journey, I will find some new ones and I'll definitely let you know if I find any. But for now, please feel free to leave your comments and questions in the section below and I'll be happy to talk about them and to answer your questions in the next videos. And for now, thank you and have a nice day. Bye!